very good morning class today we are here to learn about science so we are going to start science and technology part 2 and the chapter that we are going to begin today is living organisms life process of living organisms we are going to study about how in a living organism respiration takes place energy is being produced and various other processes related to a living organism things a cell respires how oxygen is taken in how carbon dioxide is given out all these processes how does this process take place we are going to study about this in this particular chapter as well as how a cell gets divided as we know there are multiple cells in our body each and every cell performs certain functions that are been assigned and when the cell becomes mature enough it self divides and forms n number of multiple daughter cells so we are going to study about cell division also in this particular chapter so class let's move ahead and begin with the chapter as we all know there are different systems in human body they function in coordination with each other for this action they need constant supply of energy carbohydrates fats and lipids in the diet provide energy to the body the mitochondria present in the cytoplasm of the cell synthesizes the energy by utilizing these nutrients for this reaction oxygen is necessary it is provided by the circulating blood each cell in thus supplied with oxygen and nutrients to produce the energy plants are autotrophic they synthesize their own food by photosynthesis after utilizing some of their own needs the remaining food is stored in fruits roots stem tubers leaves etc plant matter is consumed by animals thus taking the nutrients from them so the nutrients are been divided into three groups energy giving nutrients and body building nutrients protective and regulative nutrients and all these nutrients that we acquire may be from the food we eat may be from the sunlight that we get may be from the oxygen that is that is the air around us each and every element of living organism of the environment we gain energy we gain nutrients so we gain nutrients like carbohydrates and from where what is the source of carbohydrates carbohydrates we get get from milk fruits jaggery cane sugar cereals vegetables potatoes sweet potatoes etc where else function of this carbohydrate is to provide calorie that means energy to the body so a living organism respiration in living organism takes place at the body and cellular level body level respiration exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide between body and environment cellular level respiration oxidation of food stuffs food stuffs inside the cell so this is how the process of respiration takes place as you can see the in the picture we have a nasal cavity from the nasal cavity oxygen goes inside and through a diaphragm it enters the lungs and the alveoli and bronchi that are there in our body in the alveoli what exactly happens is been shown in the next or besides the picture so what is happening as you can see there is an alveoli picture blood comes in oxygen is given out and uh, carbon dioxide is given out and oxygen enters the enters inside the blood cells right so this is the veins arteries and veins through which the blood is been circulated in the body 
so what has happened the blood which contains carbon dioxide in it it enters alveoli and in alveoli what is happening they are pumping oxygen in the alve uh, in the blood and this oxygen is then utilized by various parts of the body so what is happening exactly deoxygenated blood and oxygenated blood when there is deoxygenated blood the blood enters alveoli and oxygen is been supplied to that particular blood when the blood comes out from the alveoli and it enters your heart when it enters the oxygenated blood enters your heart and that heart has oxygen or that blood contains oxygen in it when it reaches the heart through the heart it passes on to various parts of the body where your body uses the oxygen present in the blood when the oxygen in the blood has been used so what happens when the cells respire right each and every cell in our organ in our body what is happening respiration takes place and when respiration is taking place they give out carbon dioxide how is carbon dioxide produced in our body when the organs in the body they they utilize the oxygen that is present in the blood at that moment what is given out by the cells carbon dioxide is given out by the cells that carbon dioxide get mixed up with the blood that blood goes again to the heart and from the heart that blood is moved on respiration by the organs therefore left with carbon dioxide so what is left when the oxygen is been used by the body or by the organs respiration takes place by those organs and carbon dioxide is given inside the blood when carbon dioxide gets mixed with the blood it moves to the heart and from the heart it moves to your alveoli and where in the alveoli again oxygenated blood gets gets transported to various parts of the body this is how in the alveoli deoxygenated blood gets converted into oxygenated blood what do you mean by breathing breathing means just taking in oxygen so breathing is a process of inhaling oxygen and exhaling carbon dioxide oxygen means o2 and carbon dioxide means co2 then what do you mean by respiration respiration is a process wherein oxygen has been utilized for various activities of your body and then carbon dioxide is released out of your body now this is how energy is being produced or this is how the this is how actually the process of respiration takes place c6h12o6 that is glucose and oxygen when they combine together we get the residues or product in the form of carbon dioxide gas water molecules and energy that is also called as atp molecules so there are a lot of amount of energy that has been produced when glucose and carbon dio uh, oxygen combines together but in this particular chemical reaction as you can see it is an unbalanced chemical equation wherein if you observe the molecules of carbon are six where else in your product side there are only one molecule of carbon so to make it equal what do we need to do we need to add six molecules so we don't have to disturb the compound that is co2 so we cannot add c6 what we have to do we have to add six before c so what we will do is as in your lhs there are six molecules so what we are doing is we are adding six before carbon dioxide right we cannot change the molecular formula of carbon dioxide that is the reason we have to add six molecules ahead right so now carbon dioxide is been properly what we say balanced in your lhs as well as your rhs let's talk about hydrogen there are how many molecules of hydrogen 12 and in your lhs there are only two molecules right h2o so there are only two molecules of hydrogen so what we need to do is there are all, already h2o is present so to make it 12 we need to multiply h by 6 so we add 6 next to h so that becomes 6 uh, 6 1 is 6 6 2 is 12 hydrogen has been also balanced 
we had 12 molecules of hydrogen in your LHS and 12 molecules of hydrogen in your RHS. Now, let's talk about oxygen. In your LHS, there are 6 plus 2, 10 or 8, 8 molecules. But now, in your RHS, the molecules have changed. 6 1s are 6, 6 2s are 12. Since it is O2, it is 6 1s are 6, 6 2s are 12. In your product side, the oxygen molecules are 6, 2s are 12. Again, 6. Because CO2, there were already 2 molecules. We added 6 before C. So, 6, 2s are 12. In carbon dioxide, we got 6, 12 molecules of oxygen. Where else in water, that is H2O, we got only 6 molecules. So, 12 plus 6 equals to 18. In your product side, there are 18 molecules of oxygen and you have six molecules over here so what are we going to do we are going to add six right so six when we added how much total molecules we got six twos are twelve or two six twos are twelve and six molecules in glucose so that all together the equation has got balanced each molecule has been balanced. Carbon has been balanced. Hydrogen has been balanced. As well as oxygen has been balanced. When this particular equation has been carried out, that means balancing of the LHS and RHS, that means products and reactants is been taking place. There is a lot amount of energy that has been released. And this energy that has been released, that is called as ATP. ATP molecules are being stored in your mitochondria. That means... Your mitochondria which you all know. What is mitochondria? Mitochondria is also called as the powerhouse of cell. Right? So when this mitochondria stores energy, whenever your body requires energy, mitochondria supplies this energy to your body. So class, as you can see, oxygen molecules are not stable. In your product side, we have 6 1s are 6, 6 2s are 12. 12 molecules you get from carbon dioxide. Where else in high water, we have only 6 molecules. So 6 plus what we have? 12 gives me 18. So in your product side, we have 18 molecules of oxygen. But in your reactant side, we only have 8 molecules. So there are 10 molecules which are less. So what are we going to do? Basically, there are 12 molecules which are less. So what are we going to do is. In your oxygen. We are going to add 6 molecules of oxygen. So when we add 6 molecules of oxygen. We have we are obtained a stable combination. That means a stable reaction has been performed. A stable reaction takes place where each. The reactant side and the product sides is being balanced. Class. When the balancing of equation takes place or the balancing of each and every molecule takes place, compound takes place, there is a lot amount of energy that has been released and that energy is being stored. Where it is being stored? It is stored in the cell and which part of the cell? As we have all have studied, it is the mitochondria of the cell. So when this particular reaction, that means glucose, when it gets oxygen, that means when it gets oxidized, it forms a lot amount of energy. That means ATP molecules are being formed. Right? So we are going to study how these ATP molecules and why. Mitochondria is called the powerhouse of the cell. Because it stores energy, we have learned this. There is a good reason mitochondria is called powerhouse of the cell. But why? Right? We used to study because it stores energy that the cell produces and then it the cell whenever it wants, it can utilize the energy that has been stored in the mitochondria. Therefore, it is called as the powerhouse of the cell. Till 8th standard or 9th standard, we just studied this. But today, we are going to learn why mitochondria, how energy is being stored in the mitochondria, we are going to learn to it today. Right? So, class, as you can see in the picture, a person is taking in what? Oxygen. That oxygen is been transferred where? Into our lungs. What is present in the lungs? Alveoli is present in the lungs. And that alveoli, what does that alveoli do? That alveoli, it puts in or it pumps in oxygen inside our blood. And that blood 
carries oxygen towards our heart that oxygenated blood when it is brought to the heart the heart transfers it to various parts of our body to various organs of our body what is an organ made up of an organ is made up of various tissues that are present in our body and that tissue utilizes oxygen for its functioning what is a tissue made up of a tissue is made up of a combination of multiple or millions of cells these cells come together to perform one particular tissue and these many tissues come together to form one organ performing a function like heart skin these are what these are our organs legs hands arms uh, liver lungs alveoli these are all these are our all these are our what we say organs so these organs have millions and billions of cells present in it and these cell each and every cell is having a mitochondria each and every cell carries on the process of various formations like energy transformations so we are going to study that in detail now as one cell we are going to study this for one cell we all know our entire body has multiple cells present inside it so what are we going to do we are going to study how energy is being produced so we have a cell in a cell we have our nucleus and along with the nucleus we have cytoplasm and we have mitochondria so the main three things that we are going to study today we don't want any other organelles of the cell no golgi bodies no vessels no nothing we just want these three parts that are present in the cell nucleus cytoplasm and mitochondria the main part or the main functioning of what we say energy is done in the cytoplasm and it is stored in the mitochondria so we are going to study that in detail now as you saw in the earlier slide we are we had a formula of glucose when glucose got combined or uh, oxidized with oxygen molecules so what happened basically glucose got combined with oxygen and it gave water molecules oxygen carbon dioxide molecules as well as it released a lot amount of energy right so when glucose got oxidized it converted itself or the by product that was left behind was papa papa means pyruvic acid right so papa i said 2 pa 2 pa right 2 pa papa contains pa pa that means 2 pa 2 pa means two molecules of pyruvic acid so glucose when it glucose synthesizes itself it gives me papa that means pyruvic acid pyruvic acid further synthesizes itself to release a lot amount of energy and it gets converted into acetyl coenzyme a each papa we have two papas so one papa will be one acetyl coenzyme a other papa would give me other acetyl coenzyme a when this acetyl coenzyme a it gives out two molecules of nadh2 and fadh2 and enters into the mitochondria and that process is called as a krebs cycle all right so this is a short form we don't have to go in detail that what exactly is happening how is it getting converted no that is for your higher standard that means when you take science as a field for higher studies and you choose biology as a subject you're going to study this in detail over there that how glucose gets converted into papa how papa gets converted into acetyl coenzyme and what is krebs cycle we just have to study this short in detail glucose get converted into two papa two papa gets converted into acetyl coenzyme a acetyl coenzyme a enters mitochondria and gives krebs cycle the krebs cycle has been completed now when glucose converts itself into papa that means pyruvic acid that process is called as glycolysis okay and when this process takes place papa is one of the by product other than papa we also have nadh2 molecules and water molecules after when papa gets converted into acetyl coenzyme a we are left with two by product that is nadh2 and co2 now what is nadh2 and fadh2 these molecules are nothing but they produce atp molecules so these are different forms of atp energy giving molecules to your body right 
glucolysis. Glucose molecule is oxidized stepwise into two molecules of each pyruvic acid, ATP, NADH2 and water. This process takes place in the cytoplasm. Pyruvic acid formed during glycolysis is converted into a molecule of acetyl coenzyme A and two molecules each of NADH2 and CO2. Once glycolysis has been completed, your PAPA gets converted into acetyl coenzyme A. That particular process is called as tricarboxylic acid cycle. When acetyl coenzyme A molecule enters the mitochondria, the tri tricarboxylic acid cycle chain reaction takes place in mitochondria. Acetyl part of acetyl coenzyme A is completely oxidized, releasing molecules of CO2, H2O and FADH2 and NADH2. So what is FADH2 and NADH2 in this case? They are nothing but your ATP molecules, right? Once they enter the mitochondria, the electron transfer chain reaction, that means electron transfer chain or your electron transfer system takes place only in the mitochondria. Molecules of NADH2 gives me electron transfer chain is also called as Krupp's cycle or citric acid cycle. This happens in the mitochondria. Tricarboxylic acid cycle is TCA is also called as Krupp's cycle or citric acid cycle. In the mitochondria, when we get NADH2 molecules and FADH2 molecules, so one molecule of NADH2 is equal to 3 ATP, that means energy, 3 molecules of energy and one molecule of FADH2 is equal to 2 molecules of ATP. Now, when this entire process takes place, the ATP molecules that is NADH2 and FADH2 is being stored where in the mitochondria. And they are nothing but forms of energy. Therefore, mitochondria is called as powerhouse of the cell. We don't have to go in detail that why, how the reaction takes place. Because that you are going to study in your higher classes. That is when you take science as your field and you take biology as a subject. You are going to study how glycolysis, the process of glycolysis. How three molecules, six molecules get converted or get attached and how this chain reaction takes place. But for now, for our SSC, we are going to study about these steps only. Let us once again, you know, revise what we studied in this slide. From We will start from the first picture. When we take in oxygen, that oxygen has been utilized by our lungs. Through our lungs, oxygen has been pumped inside our blood through alveoles and that blood has been sent to the heart. In your heart, from your heart, the oxygenated blood is sent to various organs of your body. That organs utilize, that organ is made up of various tissues and cells. The cell utilizes the oxygen. How does it utilize? The glucose that is present in the cytoplasm of the cell gets oxygen from the blood. And it leaves behind two papa, that means pyruvic acid. Pyruvic acid further divides itself and forms acetyl coenzyme A. This process is called as Krupp's cycle when after completion of Krupp's cycle we are left with FADH and NADH molecules. So NADH molecule means two mo three molecules of ATP and FADH molecules means two molecules of ATP. In the cytoplasm we go across glycolysis where glucose is being converted into PAPA. We learn about Tricarboxylic acid cycle that means when PAPA, pyruvic acid gets converted to acetyl coenzyme A and in your mitochondria when electron transfer system or electron transfer chain, chain takes place. Thus one molecule of glucose gives out carbon dioxide, water along with energy after complete oxidation in the presence of oxygen. In case of less storage of carbohydrates in the body, then lipid, that means fats and proteins are utilized for producing energy. Lipids are converted into fatty acids and proteins are broken down to amino acid. In such condition, both fatty acid and amino acids are converted into acetyl coenzyme A, that means carbohydrates, glucose is a part of carbohydrates. 
we have carbohydrates glycolysis pyruvic acid acetyl coenzyme since glucose is not present in the cell then fat gets converted to fatty acid and directly to acetyl coenzyme e proteins to amino acids and directly to acetyl coenzyme e this is a process when oxygen is present in the body when oxidation takes place so we studied in the earlier slide about glucose carbohydrates so carbohydrates gets converted to glycolysis glycolysis to pyruvic acid pyruvic acid to acetyl coenzyme a acetyl coenzyme a completes the cycle called as curbs cycle and at the end of curbs cycle we are left with carbon dioxide water and atp molecules that means energy what if the body doesn't have atp molecules inside it or if the body doesn't have carbohydrates present inside it then we have fats that is also called as lipids fats gets converted to fatty acids and at the end we have acetyl coenzyme a similarly if we don't have fats we don't have carbohydrates we have proteins that is present in the body so proteins gets converted to amino acids and then it is getting converted to acetyl coenzyme a this is the process of energy production through aerobic respiration that means presence of oxygen what if oxygen is not present that means anaerobic respiration so when anaerobic respiration in living organisms or cells takes place glucose gets converted to glycolysis pyruvic acid but we had acetyl coenzyme a when we had aerobic respiration we'll have fermentation process over here and different pro products like vinegar vitamins and all would be your by product using various microorganisms because if oxygen is not oxygen is not present then we have what microorganisms which is going to take the process of fermentation similarly pyruvic acid so through pyruvic acid and fermentation we also can produce alcohol right we can produce alcohol and yeast is a uh, what is used yeast is used as a alcohol and if not even alcohol then we have lactic acid to produce it and we have erythrocytes and muscle cell which is a part of lactic acid this is what this is nothing but process of energy production through anaerobic respiration of living organisms and cells now we are going to study about atp structure atp structure means energy production structure what is the full form of adp adp adenosine triphosphate that means three phosphate right what do you mean by adenosine adenosine means adenine plus ribose adenine plus ribose that means hexagon plus pentagon that is the structure of adenine okay adenine means has hexagon plus pentagon so hexagon means a figure having six sides pentagon means a figure having five sides so let's see this is a hexagon this is a pentagon so this entire adenine is what hexagon and pentagon attached together is called as adenine this is the structure of atp i am going to show you this is what we are studying is the structure of atp so this is the structure of atp adenine plus ribose means pentagon so we also have one pentagon separate they combine together to make a adenosine which is there in our atp molecule and we have three phosphate right three phosphate means three molecules of phosphate so one phosphate second phosphate and third phosphate when energy is been released or when energy is been stored now what is going to happen this energy is going to be utilized by the body by the organs right so when energy gets utilized we have full amount of energy when we have three phosphates but when energy gets utilized that means one phosphate goes out when one phosphate goes out we are left with no energy 
and we are left with two molecules of phosphate that is diphosphate. When the energy was stored, it was adenosine triphosphate, three molecules of phosphate. But when the energy was utilized by the body, we were left with two phosphate molecules. Class, we have almost done in the next lecture, we are going to start with the next part of the chapter. So, you sit back and revise what we have studied in this particular lesson till now. Read the chapter, you are going to come across various things. You're, but as, as I have done one slide, second slide, third slide, read that part that is present in your textbook, things would be more clear. This is just the explanation that I have given you of a, sh a short explanation of what is there in your textbook. But once you read the entire text, you will understand the entire chapter or whatever explanation has been given in the slide. Okay class, thank you. Stay home, stay safe, keep studying.